In today's Gospel reading, our Lord praises this poor widow who puts into the um, temple treasury everything that she has, two small copper coins, which are basically very, very little. But she's putting her faith in God. And this is the key. So she, she trusts totally in God. Now with widows, unfortunately, if they didn't have family members to take care of them, they would have been destitute. And it seems to be the case with this poor widow that she doesn't have anyone to, to, uh, to rely upon. And that is why she has so little. But she trusts in God. She trusts that God will somehow provide for her so that she'll be taken care of. And the message here is that we ought to do the same, to trust God completely. Now, that doesn't mean we have to give everything away, especially if we live in the world. People have to work. They have to pay their bills. They have to plan for their future, their retirement, the education of their children, so on and so on. But yes, we should be generous with God. Now, trusting in God doesn't necessarily mean we give everything to him. When it comes to the religious, they do abandon all worldly possessions to, to kind of live a life of total dependence upon God. So as you know, those who join religious orders, they take a vow of poverty, obedience, and chastity. So poverty. So in other words, they don't want to rely on material wealth. They want to rely totally on the providence of God. So people give donations to those religious orders, or sometimes they do works to raise money, but the, the religious order takes care of them. In other words, God through these religious orders. So we are not, not everybody is called to enter into a religious order or to renounce all things, but we are all called to trust God completely and to entrust ourselves to him completely. And so we ought to be generous with God and not just when it comes to financial contributions to the upkeep of the church, but, but um, you know, I read a commentary and it said, you know, even in regards to the time that we give to God. You know, some people say, oh, well, if I have some time left, uh, maybe I'll pray the rosary. Maybe I'll do some spiritual reading. It's kind of like we're giving God from our abundance, whatever's kind of left over. In other words, our Lord points out that others put way more than she did, but, but they contributed out of their abundance. In other words, it was easy for them to do that. And, you know, many Catholics, they may have, you know, a lot of money, they may give large contributions, but percentage-wise, it may not be as much as what others are giving. And, and the same with our time. So in other words, we should give God quality time. Ideally, if we have the time, we should pray the rosary on a daily basis for those who take the spiritual life seriously to spend some time in meditation or mental prayer and ideally to do some spiritual reading on a daily basis also. So yes, it's hard to fit into busy schedules, if, especially if people are still working full-time jobs and having to travel to get to and from work. It does make it difficult. But we need to give God number one priority. Now, this idea of, of total self-giving, it's one that's very appropriate for today's feast, which is the feast of the dedication of the Blessed Virgin Mary or the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And what this feast refers to is that her parents, Joachim and Anne, presented Mary or dedicated Mary to God by presenting her in the temple. And the tradition is that Mary was raised in the temple by the, the temple virgins and, and the people running the temple, the priests and, and all these individuals. So she was taught in this way. She still would have had contact with her parents. They would have visited her. Maybe she would have spent some time at their place. But we also know that her parents were very, very old. And so they may not have been capable of, of caring for her as, as um, as would have been ideal. So, so and, and, and it kind of reiterates, not only did her parents dedicate her to God, but Mary dedicated herself to God. Recall the angel Gabriel, when at uh, the Annunciation, Mary says, behold the handmaid of the Lord. In other words, I am the servant of the Lord. I am totally dedicated to doing the will of God. And this is exactly what she does. You know, sometimes people ask me, well, how much should we contribute 
to the church. And keep in mind that the, the contributions that we give to the church, it's not just monetary. It's easy to give a monetary donation. We also contribute to the church by being involved in the church and the various groups of the church. That helps to build up the church community. Participating in the various events of the church. All of these things help to build up the church. But we also build up the church by what we do outside the church. The example that we give to others. By drawing people into the church also. So these are the ways in which we con contribute to the church. When it comes to monetary contributions, people do ask me, well, how much should I give? And, you know, the Old Testament uh, tradition was tithing 10% of everything. So in other words, that would be like your gross income, 10% of that. The Catholic Church does not insist on tithing. And part of the reason is because we recognize that not everybody... Uh, is as financially well off as others might be. And so we understand that sometimes people are just strapped with, you know, expenses and having to make all kinds of payments. So we don't insist on tithing. We don't even encourage tithing, but we do encourage people to be generous in their support of the church. And keep in mind, there's different ways in, in which we can do that. But it's interesting when we look at these Protestant churches, these non-Catholic Christian churches, they insist on tithing because they follow the Old Testament tradition. And because they insist on tithing, some of these Protestant churches, especially these modern-day megachurches, they make a lot of, or they have a, a large income. And so they're able to hire, you know, a good youth minister. They, they also use that money to pay their pastor. So their pastors get paid very well. But they hire all kinds of people, you know, sound technicians and, uh, you know, all these things. And even with the Catholic Church, especially the larger churches that are able to afford more, they will have a lay pastoral associate. They will have a youth minister. They will have, you know, uh, um, somebody to assist the, the pastor in administration of the sacraments and, and things like that. So recently we were able to hire a lay uh, minister in, in our parish and, you know, our secretary is only part-time. So we don't, we don't uh, pay as much as, as some of these other churches that have full-time secretaries. But it just goes to show that when the church has a good income, ideally they would use that income to try to build up the church by having very professional individuals to run a youth ministry or lay pastoral things or, or, or whatever it may be. So the support that is given to the church, yes, part, part of it is to pay the bills, to maintain the, the physical structure of the church. You know, we still have to redo our parking lot at, at some point. We've been working on that for quite some time. But just to show that your contributions go a long way. So thank you for, for your contributions, and yes, please keep that up, not just the financial contributions, but the contributions in so many other ways. So let us, let us imitate Our Lady in this total self-giving. Let us imitate her parents also in their dedicating Mary to God in, in the temple, and this is what we are called to do, to dedicate ourselves to God, but also our loved ones, as did uh, the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary.